My name is Guo Ping Feng. I'm an investigator at the, the Magawa Institute. I'm also a poetry professor of neuroscience in the brain and cognitive science. I was growing up in China. The first time they restored the, the higher education for college entrance exam, I got into a medical school. By the end of the medical school, final year of medical school, you do interns, seeing patients with doctors together. And the thing really struck me most was we knew so little about so many disorders and most of disorders, diseases, there's very little we can do to help patients. So that time I decided I need to go do research to know more about the, the, the disease and maybe develop more, more effective treatment. I'm mostly interested in uh, you know, the development of the nervous system and uh, especially how the disruption of this nervous system will lead to brain disorders. Traditionally, it's very hard to model human psychiatric disorders in animal models because animals are not humans, they are different. We don't know what they are thinking, we don't know whether they are obsessed. But in the past few years, the combination of understanding what human genes involved that you can model in animal behavior and the advance of behavior testing in, in, in mice and rodents really helped us a lot because we can model some aspect, a, a very specific symptoms of this human disorder in mice and understand how this mutation can lead to this very unique symptoms. Think about a brain, there are billions of neurons. They have connections precisely, this neuron connects to other neurons. They are not randomly connected. Most of neurons communicate through a very specialized connection called synapses. Basically synapses are the junction between two neurons and in that very small, a few micron you know, structure, there are trillions of trillions of these synapses. There are many, many different types. And so because this is a building block of our communication, you can imagine anything wrong with this synapse will lead to uh, dysfunction of our nervous system. So one of the approaches is to look at the, the genes important for, for the development of the uh, nervous system in the mice and then look at how this gene may function in humans. Once you identify this gene, you can also go in human patients to sequence to see whether you can find mutations of this gene in a certain disorders. And on the other hand, if human geneticists find mutations, we can take that mutation in from humans and make a mouse with the exact same mutation to see how they affect the brain function of the mice. Then you generate a, a model for this disorder. Our approach is to study how the scaffolding proteins, they are the key group of proteins important for assembly of synapses. We want to see how mutation of this uh, key scaffolding protein can lead to synaptic dysfunction and abnormal behavior in animals. One of the proteins, CEPAP3, when we mutated, we found these mice have a compulsive uh, repetitive grooming behavior. They actually groom their hair off, then grooming their scale, skin off. They still keep grooming. So that reminds us uh, uh, obsessive compulsive like behavior. There are many clinical studies showing a very specific brain area called striatum is important for obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. What we did was to specifically put this gene back only in the striatum, a small brain area. So we think, can you rescue this behavior? If you can, then you pinpoint down this is the brain area is responsible for this type of abnormal behavior. So that's exactly what it did. And we have further evidence that there are neurocircuitry defects in that area, which point us to a new potential target for um, drug development in the future. Many of autistic patients, um, about 30% of them, have comorbidity with OCD. The link also come not only from patients, but also come from molecular uh, genetic studies, because CEPAP3 directly interact with another scaffolding protein called Shank3. And Shank3 is one of the a very prominent candidate gene for aut autism. And the deletion of Shank3 has been found in many, many hundreds of um, autistic patients. One of the major symptoms in autism is repetitive uh, behavior. So we think there is a common link and a common circuitry mechanism uh, for OCD and repetitive behavior in, in, in autism. So that's made us directly connected to uh, the two different genes, but in two different disorders, but also directly related. In the past 10 years, I think lots of advance has been made not only in the tools to manipulate the, the neural function, but also the desire to understand what are the circuitry basis of behavior. How to translate 
these discoveries in animal models into uh, uh, effective treatment. This is still a, a, a long way to go, but I think that's the an ultimate goal is to translate this you know, laboratory research into the clinical side.